Boom! We are live, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Welcome to the uh, Nolan Hawkeye Anthony YouTube channel. And I thank all of you for being here, wherever you may be. And of course, however you may be listening. I checked out the calendar today and I've been telling you amazing Iowa fans that I had some of my usual videos in store for you guys, such as positional previews. And I looked at the calendar and I go, dang, we are way closer than I even realized. The season is right around the corner. It will be here before we know it. So I needed to get on these previews ASAP. The position preview that I will be taking a look at today, I'll keep it as concise and to the point as possible is the running back position. And right off the bat, it's pretty straightforward. We know who the main starters are, but there are some new guys coming in. And I will let you guys know what my expectations are for this unit. As always, be sure to hit the subscribe button. Uh, I would love to get to 2,000 subscribers by the time the football season rolls around. Like, comment, share. Uh, and if you guys want to donate to the channel, support your boys' coffee habit, you guys can absolutely do so through PayPal or the Cash app. And without further ado, let's get into this. So right off the bat, guys, when you are talking about the Iowa running back group, you have to talk about Caleb Johnson. And you guys know, especially those of you who have been watching the channel a long time, I should make a t-shirt that says that. For those of you who have been watching the channel for a long time, <laughs> uh, I have been a fan of Caleb Johnson since Iowa landed his commitment. I thought it was a massive, major recruiting win for the Iowa Hawkeyes. And if you remember, there was the whole COVID situation that was going on. Uh, high school season had high school sports had effectively shut down uh, and Iowa and the Big Ten barely even had a football season. But the season that they were able to have, Iowa, of course, had a really, really solid season uh, and it paid dividends towards landing Caleb Johnson's commitment. And at the time, he was committed to Cal. Cal Berkeley had a ton of offers, high three-star, low four-star running back, and it was a huge flip for the Iowa Hawkeyes to be able to get him on campus and get him to be an Iowa Hawkeye. It was late in the year that he visited the Hawkeyes, really, really late in the year, just a massive recruiting victory. In my eyes, I think he is probably the best one of the best running back recruits that Iowa has recruited since probably Tyler Goodson. But I would make the case that if you just look at the physicality, the size, the athletic tools, the athletic gifts, he is the best. I mean, he is the best running back Iowa has recruited in a long, long time. So when he had a phenomenal freshman campaign I was not surprised in the least in fact if you guys also remember I told you guys to expect Caleb Johnson to be in the Iowa running back group uh if not become the the starter by the end of the season so I don't want to you know praise myself too much here but I gotta call a spade a spade I definitely did say that last year and here we are we are a year later, and he is a premier running back in the Big Ten. That is where you have to start is Caleb Johnson. The next running back, uh, as I'm pulling up the depth chart here, uh, is the veteran of the group, LaShawn Williams. Um, you know, if you look at Iowa probably two years ago, and you were to think about where Iowa's running back room would be, I think most people would have thought that LaShawn or Gavin Williams would be the starting running backs for the Iowa Hawkeyes. Gavin Williams, of course, did not end up having the season that many had hoped. Uh, he showed flashes, but ultimately his running style is really uh, only not 
only successful, but it's, you need to have a solid offensive line. You just need to, because a guy like Gavin Williams, I don't want to talk about him too much as he's no longer on the team, but he's a bruising running back and he needs space to operate. And the last two years, Iowa, especially this last year, Iowa just has not had the space up front that they would like to have had. Uh, and that's why guys like LaShawn Williams and Caleb Johnson have been more successful because they have a little bit more wiggle to them. So LaShawn Williams, I think it was a huge uh, get for the Iowa Hawkeyes for him to remain on the roster. I thought that he was a potential transfer portal guy, uh, given the fact that Caleb Johnson had effectively become the starting tailback for the Iowa Hawkeyes. But no, he has chosen to stay with the Iowa Hawkeyes, which ultimately I see as a very, very smart decision. Because at the end of the day, even if you're a backup, you're a backup in the Big Ten. You're still going to be in the rotation. Uh, and Iowa has a more or less running back by committee approach. So it, it, it doesn't get much better. Now, you know, he could have left and maybe try to be the premier running back at a lesser power five school. That's not, you know, as as well-rounded as the Hawkeyes as a team or gone to a Mac school or something like that. But he stayed with the Iowa Hawkeyes, which I think that this is excellent news for the Iowa Hawkeyes. And I think LaShawn Williams is going to have a solid campaign. Uh, we have not seen the best out of him yet. Uh, he has a lot to give this Iowa Hawkeye team. The next guy to discuss would be Josiah Patterson. He was a running back commit. Uh, in the same class as Caleb Johnson, the 2022 recruiting class. It was the recruiting class uh, during the season that Iowa went 10 and four, lost to Michigan and lost to Kentucky in their final two games. And as I was mentioning before, that is why ultimately Iowa was able to land Caleb Johnson because they had they were having such a successful season. It's a big reason why they landed Xavier Wampa. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and get their recruiting profile. It may have been the 2021 class, actually. Um, let's go ahead and get commits here. Commits here. Josiah Patterson, of course, hails from the state of Florida, from one of the premier high school programs, not only in Florida, but the country in Deerfield Beach. Uh, I think that you can make the case that in a lot of regards, Josiah Patterson was an even better get than Caleb Johnson was. If you factor in being from the state of Florida, playing at Deerfield Beach, you, you cannot put a price on that, guys. It is very, very important to be able to recruit in the state of Florida and land guys like, like Josiah Patterson. I alluded to this before. He had some excellent offers. Here's Caleb Johnson's profile here. Oops, clicked on TJ Hall here. Uh, not doing cornerbacks yet. Caleb Johnson considered a four-star running back by on three, high three-star by 247 Sports, high three-star, uh, looks like a 78 by ESPN, and a four-star by Rivals with a composite grade of an 88.80. .80. So that definitely puts him up there as one of the uh, best running back recruits Iowa's had in the last five years or so. Uh, moving on down to Josiah Patterson here. Josiah Patterson was a unique story because due to him going to Deerfield Beach, he had a lot of exposure to Power 5 programs and schools all around the country by way of his school being such a good, te good team. And he had offers from Michigan, uh, Alabama. I mean, we're talking some legitimate schools here. Now, of course, um, you know, there are some schools who offer just to offer. Uh, I mean, look at this, guys. He had offers from Texas A&M, Alabama, Penn State, Alabama, uh, Penn State, Michigan, um, Oregon, Miami, Tennessee, Auburn. I mean, guys. Xavier Wanpa may not have a better offer sheet than Josiah Patterson. Now, again, ultimately, 
not all of these offers were committable offers as running back classes tend to fill up fairly quickly. Um, but nonetheless, guys, I mean, he had about as good of an offer sheet as you one can have. Uh, he was pretty much a consensus, you know, mid three, star, you know, 5.7 by rivals, ESPN 78, 247 sports, 86 on 386. The final guys that I want to preview for you guys would be the two guys that committed to the Iowa Hawkeyes in the 2023 class. Now, there is one guy who I have not mentioned yet who committed to Iowa a few years back as a running back, the last running back commit of running backs coach Derek Foster, who's no longer with the Iowa Hawkeyes, and that would be Devin Hilson. I don't believe he is a running back for the Iowa Hawkeyes any longer. I think he is now a DB for the Iowa Hawkeyes, and we will see how that goes. Um, you know, I just my two cents on it while we're, and I'll talk about it more when we do the defensive back preview. But uh, I think uh, from day one, I've thought that Devin Hilson has phenomenal athletic ability. Uh, and Iowa just needs to find the right position for him. Ultimately, it may be linebacker. It could be safety. So we'll we'll see. I think he's going to end up at safety if I had to guess. He just has the size and the athleticism. Could end up being a cash. A um, lot of versatility there. So the running backs that Iowa have received commitments from in this past class would be Terrell Washington Jr., which was a phenomenal late get for the Iowa Hawkeyes. He was committed to Purdue. And then of course, Purdue's head coach, Jeff Brom, as I told you guys, I heard a story from a Purdue fan who is heavily invested in the Purdue program, went to the university of Purdue said that it was likely that Jeff Brom was going to leave for Louisville, which of course he did. And I shared that with you guys. I actually really, really like this uh, recruit here. I think he has tremendous potential. Now, ultimately, I think he's more in the mold of Tyler Goodson or a Tyrone Tracy, where he's not a pure running back and he's not a pure wide receiver. And we'll kind of see where that puts him. Ultimately, Iowa may just have him be a, a will, may just put him as a slot receiver. And me putting him in as a running back in my uh, running back preview, maybe for not. But I do know he was recruited to play at Iowa as a running back who can be versatile on the field and play a little bit of wide receiver as well. So we'll see how that shapes out either way. I really do, man on three is having website is having problems guys. Uh, <laughs> that's crazy. But um, so very, very good. And the last receipt, the last running back, excuse me, uh, that is of note would be Kamari a Moulton or excuse me, Kamari Moulton, uh, a running back out of Florida, a late get. Iowa had missed on a few of their, well, actually what happened is Iowa had a commitment from high three-star, low four-star Kendrick Raphael out of Naples uh, due to Iowa's lack of success on the offensive, offensive side of the football. He ends up committing to decommitting from the Iowa Hawkeyes and committing to North Carolina state, which of course was one of his finalists uh, even before he committed to the Hawkeyes. So Iowa had to go back to the playing board recruiting board rather, and find uh, a running back to start out this class. They, you know, at the time Iowa had no idea that Terrell Washington jr. Was going to become available, but due to the situation that popped up, he kind of had no, and he, you know, he really, it just worked out really, really well for both sides. You know, he wanted to continue to play in the Big Ten. Iowa is as good of a program as it gets. And, I mean, signing day was right around the corner. So Iowa and Terrell Jackson or Terrell Washington Jr. really needed each other, and it worked out really, really well. But before that, before Iowa knew that he would become available, they needed a running back on the board, and they got that in Kamari Moulton. 
Uh, he is a smaller running back. I think he is going to be a project for the Iowa Hawkeyes. Uh, but I think he definitely has potential. He comes from a really nice high school in the state of Florida, Cardinal Gibbons. And we will monitor his success. Now, last but not least, last but not least, what are my expectations for the Iowa Hawkeyes running game? Now, at the end of the day, we all know that a lot of this is going to depend on the development of the offensive line. What happens with the offensive line? Now, a lot of my projection on this running back unit is based on my projection of the offensive line, not necessarily the offensive hole, but, but the offensive line specifically. And I think the offensive line is going to be immensely better and improved from last year and the year prior that the running back room will be better just because of that. Um, so I just want to, warn you guys that a lot of my prediction is based off of uh, the Iowa offensive line development. These are the stats from last year. Caleb Johnson had 779 yards rushing LaShawn Williams, 412 uh, Josiah Patterson. Most of his yards came against Kentucky 47 yards. My expectations uh, are for Iowa to have one of the better running back rooms in the big 10. Do I think it'll be the best running back room in the big 10? Probably not, but I think it's that the running back room for Iowa has as much talent as anybody, especially with the lead back that they have in Caleb Johnson. Um, will Caleb Johnson eclipse his 780 yards? I think so. I think so. Uh, I think you can put Caleb Johnson, a, a successful campaign for Caleb Johnson to me would be anywhere from 800 to 1200 yards. Um, 800 on the, on the low end, 1200 on the high end. I'd be very stunned if he made it past 1200 due to Iowa's running back by committee approach. Um, but I think he definitely has the ability as for, uh, yards per, per attempt. I think maintaining the 5.2 average would be really, really solid, um, you know, it's kind of hard to, to get better than that. Maybe he gets up to five and a half, but I think as long as he's above five, he's in good shape. Hopefully he can rush for around 10 touchdowns and that'll be a really good sophomore campaign for Caleb Johnson. And he will be well on his way to the NFL. LaShawn Williams. I think if he can have a 500 yard rushing campaign, he'll be that that'll be good. Now, this is where it gets kind of murky. I don't know for sure whether I believe Josiah Patterson or LaShawn Williams will have a better campaign. I can envision a situation where Caleb Johnson is the pure unadulterated lead back for the Iowa Hawkeyes and the, the other snaps get distributed basically equally between Josiah Patterson uh, and LaShawn Williams, depending on the game and depending on how they're running the football. Um, to me, though, as long as one of them can rush for 500 yards, Iowa will be in really good shape, really, really good shape. So that that's kind of where I'm at with it. I would not be surprised in the least if Josiah Patterson towards the end of the season, hell, even midway through the season becomes the uh, the second back for the Iowa Hawkeyes. I, I would lean more towards that not happening as I think LaShawn Williams has his best football in front of him, but we'll see folks. Josiah Patterson has a lot of talent. There's a reason why he was offered by all of these blue blood programs. He's got a lot of talent and you mix that and couple that with him being in Iowa's strength and conditioning program. And you have a recipe for success folks. So um, either way, I feel really, really good about Iowa's running back group. I think it's one of the more underrated groups that Iowa has this year and a reason why I am extremely optimistic about this Iowa Hawkeye football team this year. And I do think one more prediction for you guys. I think Terrell Washington Jr., whether it's at running back or whether it's at slot receiver or a little bit of both, I think he will burn his red shirt this year and we'll see snaps for the Iowa Hawkeyes this year. Um, 
at the end of the day, Iowa is just desperately in need of playmakers. Now, they actually have a lot of pieces on offense, but in general, it's a pretty safe statement to say that Iowa's offense is in such need of playmakers that you can almost pencil in any freshman offensive playmaker to see the field at least a little bit. Um, you know, I've been right about that before with Caleb Johnson, as well as other freshman recruits. So I think Terrell Washington will see the field this year uh, and he'll be well on his way towards being a successful player for the Iowa Hawkeyes. All right, folks, that's pretty much it. That is the running back position preview. I have a lot of hopes for this unit. As I said, one of the more underappreciated groups in the Iowa Hawkeye position group, Caleb Johnson, definitely the lead back for the Iowa Hawkeyes. He, I think, is set to have a big year. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section. Like, comment, share, subscribe. Help your boy get to 2,000 subs. If you guys want to donate to my Cash App or PayPal, you're more than blessed to do so. If you guys want to support your boy's coffee habit, you guys know I absolutely appreciate it. Uh, and last but not least, DBAP, don't be a pussy willow. In fact, our feelings because your feelings just don't matter. Love you amazing Hawk fans. See you guys next time. Bye.